on recent compliance changes under GST. And I have a very distinguished panel with me today. We have Mr. Anil Kumar Gupta, he is the Additional Director General of NASIN, the National Academy of Customs, Indirect Taxes, and Narcotics. What a big name you have, sir. Welcome, sir. We have Mr. Kulma Gaspani. He is the Director of Niti Associates and an expert in uh, GST. We have another expert, Mr. V. Ranganathan. We have our in-house in expert, uh, Sridhar. And to start the discussion, may I request uh, Mr. Kulraj to tell us what the recent changes are and how they affect all of us. Sir. Right. Thanks a lot, sir. Uh, so best part uh, about the 42nd GST Council meeting is that the council members have tried to make compliances as simple as possible. They have ensured that there is no new, new return filing system that is going to be in place anytime now. They have tried to revolve around GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, 3B as the two key uh, returns, and they have tried to auto-populate things around that. So as it is often said that uh, no experiments are good experiments, so I think the GST Council has relied upon that and has tried to make life simple for taxpayers. To go around with the changes, uh, the Council members have, uh, have recommended that uh, GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B, which are the two returns, shall only continue going forward. They've recommended that GSTR1 shall be filed at all point of time before and data of GSTR1 shall get auto populated in GSTR3B as the tax liability which a taxpayer needs to discharge. There shall be introduction of a form called GSTR2B, which is currently also there, but is uh, not in a proper shape and form. Uh, the data of GSTR1 will flow to GSTR2B in terms of uh, the supplies that a taxpayer has received from other taxpayers. A taxpayer would be able to see, evaluate whether the input tax credit is right or not according to GSTR2B. And data of GSTR2B shall eventually fall through GSTR3B only. So therefore, there shall be three forms typically which a taxpayer would need to ensure going forward. One shall be GSTR1, which will contain details of output supply. One shall be GSTR2B, which will contain details of the supply that a taxpayer has received, which will be the input tax credit details. And these two details would get auto populated to form GSTR3B, which will be the ultimate tax payment form for a tax for a taxpayer. So therefore, the key part is all those new return filing systems that the government was proposing to introduce, Sehet, Sugam, ANX1, nothing is going to be there. We'll be having a simple system of GSTR1, 2B, and GSTR3B. A lot of these changes will get applicable from 1st of January 2021. Yesterday, government has notified, issued notifications for a lot of these changes as well. What one important change government has done is that the HSN, which government recently introduced, uh, bases the turnover of a taxpayer, which was nil for a taxpayer having a turnover of less than 1.5 crore, then two digit for taxpayers having 1.5 to 5 crores, and then four digit which a taxpayer had a turnover of more than 5 crore. The government has made some changes into that. The government has suggested that taxpayers having turnover of less than five crores will be required to mention four digit return on uh, the invoice as well as GSTR1. Taxpayers having turnover of more than five crores are required to mention strict digit return on invoice as well as GSTR1. The government has also uh, hold, uh, the government has also held powers to announce an eight digit return whenever uh, it is needed. One very key change the government has done is for the small taxpayers with having a turnover of less than five crores. Uh, it is suggested that the tax, such taxpayers shall have the option to file a quarterly returns only. Both 1 and 3B, they can file on a quarterly basis. Tax payment can be done through a self-generated chalan. The government has also given an option to them to pay taxes at an approximate value of 35% of the last quarter taxes for the first two months of the quarter. And third month can be actual determination of taxation. So therefore, if you look into the entire scheme of things, uh, of the changes and the compliances that the government has tried to do, is to make things simple for the taxpayers, not to revolve around too much automation, just to do simple automation, file one, get data in 3B, get 2B, get data in 3B. For small taxpayers, file returns on a quarterly basis only. However, you can keep on paying tax liability on a monthly basis. So all these suggest that the government is not trying to experiment with things, not trying to experiment with the IT framework going forward. 
uh, taxpayer would eventually be very happy from next year going forward because things are simple, things are not detailed, and things are automated as well. Besides everything, so I think overall it, it, it's a big win for the uh, taxpayers. Uh, uh, IT-driven system will not require much changes. Things will be a lot simple, and things will around with the known forms of one, three B, and two B only. Nothing much into this. So I think uh, the GST council has done a laudable effort in this time to make things simple for taxpayers, and hopefully. Uh, should not have too many changes going forward because these schemes, these forms shall remain into picture uh, for the times to come as well. Those were the key changes, sir. As effective, so you expect uh, better days for the taxpayers? Uh, for sure, there will be better days because uh, things are a lot clearer and a lot simpler now. Yeah, fine. Uh, now, Shailendra has joined us. Thank you, sir. Um, and, and my apology for being a bit late. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, well, this was from perhaps the taxpayers and the tax advisors' point of view. And he says things are going to be good. And I think uh, Mr. Anil Kumar Gupta cannot agree more uh, as uh, the government's views or the government's Actions are being uploaded by somebody who's advising the clients. Uh, sir, we have Mr. Anil Kumar Gupta, as I said, the ADG of NASIN. He teaches the tax administrators how to administer the tax. Now, sir, tell us how these recent changes are going to affect us, affect you and affect us. How is it going to be for the department? How is it going to be for the taxpayers? Good evening, everyone. And first of all, let me, uh, I'm really grateful to uh, Tax India Online for organizing this webinar and uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of this program. So uh, let me start before coming to just, just recent changes. In fact, if you say uh, over the last three years, ever since the GST has been lost, uh, it's in an evolution process and any uh, indirect tax reform of this magnitude uh, for such a vast country with uh, more than 30 states, unit territories, federal structures, uh, building consensus, all those things requires uh, uh, more than the normal time to settle down the things or to ease out the things as the things happen. So that is what I would say if we see the three years history over the, uh, of the GST, a lot of changes, need-based changes uh, on the basis of demands, requests, representations of trade and industry are being looked after from time to time to modify, tweak the law uh, to make it as simple as possible. But as you know, uh, it's always easy to make a new law than to simplify already built up law. Because sometimes in the process of simplifying, you complicate something other. So, uh, because it's all IT driven and uh, besides simplifying the law, in the law, you may be able to uh, say what you want or what your intention is. But you, when you convert into a computer hardware and software, then sometimes it turns out to be something different, what you intended and it creates a chaos. So that is what we have been experiencing you know, over the last three years. Uh, but that is part and parcel of the story, but on the whole, if you see, uh, we have changed a lot. A lot of things have happened, and if we re recapitulate briefly, uh, our uh, for small and medium taxpayers, thresholds have increased over the years. Earlier it was only 20 lakhs, now it's separate category of 40 lakhs is there for those who are supplying only goods. Then a new threshold for service tax has also come. Uh, composition scheme has also gone for service tax, 50 lakhs. Otherwise, composition schemes limit has also gone to 1.5 crore from digital starting from 75 lakhs. So uh, uh, then you talk in terms of filing of returns, although our return module could not uh, really uh, 
could not be really launched I, i would say it is only a temporary return gstr 3b which has been working and uh, we are depending on 3b and gstr 1 for over 3 years and in between we try to have a totally new return module but even that was um, uh, later on a better thinking i would say prevailed and it was thought that instead of launching a brand new new return module it's better to that we improve the existing uh, return module and now i think the thinking is on that line and we are working to improve the existing uh, return module gstr 1 2 uh, rather than launching a new module because uh, now people are more or less settled uh, attuned or adjusted or mm, comfortable with the return module we have and uh, um, we are like uh, uh, the uh, mr kulraj was mentioning recently now quarterly return monthly payment a new concept being introduced for less than 5 crore turnover people and similarly you say uh, for larger if we see bigger essentially the largest as is e invoicing has been introduced partly in be in steps from 1st october for 5 crore and above ultimately aim is to go up to 100 crore and above uh, uh assesses tax payers who turn over during the previous years like that and then oh, uh annual return if you see uh, there are a lot of uh, easy easiness in annual return filing last year 2017 18 you were saying that uh, over 2 crore you have to have a reconciliation certified by professional under 9c but now for 18 19 it's 5 crore and that limit is 5 crore so all these uh, small small steps uh, are in a direction to primarily ease out the things so that as the feedback from the trade and industry and from the tax professionals consultants practitioners all uh, uh is flowing the government is active and taking them in good spirit and uh, whatever uh, is felt is all right and uh, attempt is to um, incorporate as early and similarly we see uh, on the gst read side also there have been that is primarily for customers i would say end user customers rather than tax payers uh that has also been over the last 2 3 years rates have come down on many commodities uh, keeping in view the requirements so so the tax burden on the ultimately customer or consumers is not uh, high or it is not more than what it was before uh, the in the pre gst era all taxes uh, combined together and itc chain i would also say more or less uh, or uh, uh, even after introduction they have tried to streamline uh, so that um, as far as possible uh, itc is not denied on whatever is going as the input or input service or capital goods in the manufacture or supply of services so that uh, cascading to a great extent is reduced and uh, now the way forward hsn code recently also has been uh, though people may think or may feel it's not a step to ease out for the trade or industry they have to give now four digit and six digit earlier two digit and four digit hsn but i think uh, if you take it in a right spirit this is also a requirement internationally and um, it's good to capture the data and it facilitated policy making uh so all these changes over the over it will now uh, even registration aadhar linked because uh, government has also to find you and balance between trade facilitation and enforcement sometime earlier as deemed very uh, registration was going on within 3 days pre covid days i am telling um so lot of we had seen a flurry, a flurry of cases of fake invoicing uh, merging or registrations Uh, through this deemed process uh, being taken by unscrupulous people exploiting the system and uh, in a way casting shadow on the entire system itself that those who are genuine who are not concerned with this kind of trade but they also suffer in the process and uh, 
and that is why during the covid period uh, as uh, coronavirus spread uh, this deemed registration was suspended for a long time almost 4 5 6 months and uh, now it is being resumed but uh, uh, to safeguard and uh, now it it has been linked to aadhar based verification so that who uh, whoever provides aadhar he'll get a uh, identif- identify he'll get a deemed registration within 3 days if you are non aadhar entity then of course you have to follow through the verification process it may take some time and that may be some genuine person may also have the pinch but uh, the, you can't blame for that because you have to strike a balance because otherwise uh, Uh, if you go on, go on, then certain things might happen. So these are all, I think, steps in the right direction, and uh, government is open to even more suggestions, more uh, uh, reforms as the time comes. Uh, I think uh, that would uh, suffice my opening remark. Um, uh, rest will take as uh, if there is anything else. Thank you very much. thank you sir listening to you makes us all very very positive we think that days ahead are going to be very good in fact when gst was introduced they used to say it used to be a it is going to be a win 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 for the government win for the trader and win for the taxpayer i think that's going to come somewhere we are learn as we listen to the features that you have mentioned But before I go ahead, I think uh, maybe anyone here could answer. We have two questions uh, on the board here, and since both of you mentioned about this, one question is from Mr. Rajit Dubey, who asks: Is the HSN requirement mentioned under recent notification has to be read as including SAC also, Mr. Yes, Kumar or uh, Mr. Gupta? Yes. Yeah, that would be. Uh... required for ssc as well for goods and services both yeah you agree with him sir yeah there's another question i think this only mr gupta can answer in view of the covid-19 pandemic situation is there going to be any extension of due date for filing annual returns for the year 2019 and 2020 2019-20. You are yeah. asking. Yeah, it's 2020. <laughs> That's right. 18-19. Like, you know, we, we, we were talking about 2017-18 also earlier. Ah, uh, 18-19. I think is already uh, extended till 31st October, and uh, 19-20 uh, due date is just for for. Uh, it has just become due in the sense. Yeah, those uh, till 31st December, those who f- chose to file early, they can file early. So it's too early to uh, really decide on extension dates at this uh, in middle of October when you already have a time till 31st December as it is. So its situation in the country would depend. Of course, COVID has done a lot of damage or hit to the economy and industry, all trade and uh, industry. So all of us have suffered. uh government is trying to give those relaxations need based so now we can't predict uh, fortunately for last uh, week or 10 days we uh, we are living in a hope that perhaps we have flattened our cu- curve and now we are on uh, we are going towards not uptrend we are going towards the down curve of the covid let's hope if it goes then i don't think uh, industry would demand any extension and um, this uh, date itself uh, if the things is out but otherwise depending on the circumstances government uh, you see it's 2017 18 we could finalize the return in january 2020 only so after one and a half year of the due date and 18 19 also uh, we are uh, uh, I, almost 10 months the extension is already there December 2019 to October uh, 2020 is already there. So let's hope. Anyway, these extensions are given only on the last day, no? Just the day before the last day. Yes, yes. Ah, uh, Mr. Ranganathan, we missed you for some time. Ah, uh, so we were uh, talking. I mean, your initial opening remarks on this. 
good afternoon uh, my co panelists and uh, thanks to tax india online for uh, inviting me to be part of the panel uh, i am a little removed from the ground realities of gst unlike uh, the rest of the panel who have their hands on the steering i am someone who has been traveling on the back seat for some time uh, but uh, i do keep track of what is happening around uh, to have uh, an overall view and uh, since i got uh, roped into this uh, particular uh, discussion uh, i wanted to be slightly better prepared so i reached out to a few people to get to understand as to what their uh, reaction and comments are with regard to the uh, general evolution of this particular uh, uh, tax system as well as the current changes um, while of course everybody had you know a few comments to make with regard to some uh, pending issues which needs to be ironed out etc uh, what i could gather is that uh, there is no serious um, issue which i could sense in terms of the feedback that i got uh, it's not that uh, there is some major problem that is hurting the industry and uh, they are unable to deal with it uh, i thought that itself was a very good sign i spoke to few consultants i spoke to few people who are in the industry uh, just to get the reaction Uh, i didn't think any of the points that uh, i got to hear uh, really merited uh, so much uh, attention that i need to know bring it up here as an issue so that i thought itself was a, a very good uh, starting point uh, one thing that uh, i feel you know very heartening and uh, that is the point which uh, uh, mr kulra and mr gupta uh, made is that the government seems to be very sensitive to the feedback from the uh, industry and from the ground level Uh, consultants and operating people on the various issues which they are confronted with uh, in handling the system, and I think they are being very earnest uh, in making changes uh, to help the cause of the industry uh, without losing the larger goal of uh, really making this uh, perhaps one of the best tax system in the world, uh, completely automated and has an ability to uh, capture data. Analyze it, deal with it, and then produce returns, uh, which will ultimately help the cost of the economy and uh, the other participants in the economy. So I think there is a very good balancing uh, between uh, meeting the um, ask of the industry uh, on ease of doing business uh, with uh, maintaining the integrity of a system which has been conceived in a particular spirit. and not you know uh, abandoning it midway i think that it's a very very uh, good thing uh, for a very revolutionary change uh, to sort of you know gain uh, traction and momentum uh, without you know too much of dislocation for anyone i think it's it's been a great achievement is is the kind of feeling that i have uh, from what i've seen and the second is i think the government has become very alert Jai to meeting the um, ask from the MSME sector, both in terms of easing the compliance and in providing the reliefs, uh, which again I think uh, is a very important uh, ingredient to uh, get the buy-in of a majority of the uh, tax uh, customers, uh, because numerically the people who are five hundred crores and above will be very few. but the msmes will be numerically a very large group of tax customers so i think the government is being very honest to uh, get the goodwill and the buy in of a very large section of the tax customers uh, which i think is going to be very critical in terms of making the system holistic in a period of say 3 to 5 years uh, whereby the entire business transactions happening in this country can be captured through the gst system uh, whereby we have a very robust database uh, for various economic analysis and for providing uh, inputs to policy making uh, so i think that's a very very good way and uh, this invoicing is something that i feel is a great step forward uh, because this is going to help ease the burden of compliance in the days to come because once the invoice details are captured uh, both from the output side and, and on on the corollary on the input side for the customer Uh, then much of the uh, return uh, data gets you know pre-populated with the data which is available in the system itself so perhaps we will come to a time when the entire return can be done uh, 
by the system without having the need for uh, uh, any intervention by the uh, taxpayer, uh, thereby uh, doing away with these questions that come up frequently, will we get an extension for filing return? So if you get to a stage when no return needs to be filed because it is all already in the system, uh, there will be no requirement to meet deadlines. There will be no ask for deadlines. The deadlines will cease to be valid. Uh, perhaps we will uh, reach that stage uh, not uh, very late in the day. I'm sure we will get to that point very soon because once this invoice uh, takes off, uh, then I think the core of the data capture would have taken uh, shape. Uh, I think the rest of the details can be very easily populated. So on an overall basis, I think the uh, direction is extremely good. And uh, I think there will be a lot more cooperation and collaboration given that the central government yesterday uh, accommodated the interest of the state government in terms of meeting the GST deficit and the shortfall. All this, I think, uh, is, is, is sort of pointing to uh, very, very positive uh, times ahead. And once this uh, COVID uh, problem recedes, I think the economy will uh, quickly bounce back and uh, the existence of a very robust system like the GST system is going to be very, very key to act as a catalyst for promoting ease of doing business and the growth. So these are the opening comments. Sir, thank you. Even from uh, the back seat, your view seems to be the car is having a good ride. Sir, in one of the earlier uh, webinars that we had, a panelist told us that this tinkering with GST procedures seem to be like changing the tires of the car while the car is still running. Uh, Mr. Sridhar, what do you have to add to this? Only yeah, two, three, two, three finer issues that come out of uh, the presentations earlier. One is, now, as we stand today, the hard-coded law for filing of returns, whether they be the old GSTR 1, the GSTR 2, 3, had respective sections under them. For example, 3B was an insertion to that section only subsequently. Now, January 21, all the scheme of things are changing. Now, we have only three months left between today and the beginning of January 21. So, will the statute therefore get amended because it is not merely the CGST Act that will have to get amended. The states will also have to amend so that the law stands amended fully in line with the resolution of the council in its recent meetings. That is the first point. This point is, this is on less than 5 crores, Vijay. Now, suppose you know, this is on that option of paying 35%. Because the states need the money, you need to pay. And then pay the entire amount before the end of the quarter, which is the, the, the entire quarter taken together plus the due date. Now, the question is, they can pay 35%, but the invoices will be cut out as and when they trade. Let us assume somebody less than 5 crores is trading with somebody who's higher than 5 crores. Then to that extent, a supply has been made already by that person. The person who is the recipient of goods should not have a problem of the credit. Now, must there not be an amendment to the provisions of Section 16 to reflect this spirit, Vijay? Which is very, which is, because if you read section as it's 16 as it stands, section 16 marries with whatever the current law is. But to say that, no, he will pay only 35, but I will get credit under 16 fully. Is the current scheme of the law helping that situation or should it, should it really undergo a change? Because since this is a wholesome discussion, and whatever has happened is only on the resolution of the council, but going forward, the law has also got to change. So these two are the important points, which I thought I'll raise. Since Mr. Gupta is there and Shailendra is there, he will definitely take this approach. Yes, yeah. Shailendra, take it up. Before, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So but before what, that, tell us. What Mr. Sridhar has pointed out, there is a very simple solution, which I, my guess is the GSTN is going to resort to, to, to overcome this particular uh, the problem which Mr. Sridhar has highlighted. He has highlighted a very genuine issue that, you know, if the GSTR 1 is not being, the device is not being uploaded, and only a chalan, out of hill chalan being generated for 35% of tax liability every month, till the time you come to the quarter, 
for filing your return. The simple solution perhaps is that, that on voluntary basis, maybe if somebody is willing to upload the invoices, the GSTN can give that facility that apart from this 35%, per, on a monthly basis, you just upload your invoices so that your buyers, if you are the supplier, your buyers can you know, feel a little more relaxed and, and at each before taking the ITC. They have no issue. And this will also ensure a healthy relationship between the supplier and buyer. So I think that solution is not a too ticklish problem. For that, we have to resort to amendment in section 16. A lot of procedural amendments are there and, and through the removal of uh, difficulty rules. So I think that can also take care. And maybe since the GST Council has already approved this uh, the quarterly system for less than 5 crore, and that way a huge amount of ease being offered to the taxpayers below 5 crore turnover, uh, this, this can be a small uh, tinkering with those procedures and those facil facilitation from the GST side, which will take care of it. Because ultimately, this 35% system, again, I think it's a concept which has been borrowed from the, from the income tax side. We, we are so much used to, you know, industry and trade is used to paying advanced tax. And this yeah, advanced I think tax... That you are right. This is nothing but 234C. If you see 234C, there is a concession. So in, the, in the quarter, the flexibility. Yes, exactly, sir. So you everyone... will not be charged the penal interest if you pay below this percentage. So in other words, whatever is being given to less than 5 crores is more or less similar to what is there in that in that context under 234. Absolutely. So the similar thing, you know, they have borrowed this concept. It's a good concept. Industry is used to it. And, and it, it does a lot of facilitation. At least it is it is able to reduce the number of returns. You know, because return filing and the compliance and the cost uh, and the charges of the professional perhaps have been bothering, you know, the good number of taxpayers and particularly the MSME side. And, and the traders and, and, and those who are having, you know, smaller turnovers, but certainly above 20, crore, 20 lakhs. So, you know, they have been feeling a little more pinched about it. So perhaps this is going to help them in a big way. And, and in this, in any case, uh, you know, uh, so far as revenue uh, gathering is concerned, the government is able to gather most of the revenue, almost 95, 96% from less than 1% of taxpayer base. So, for others, what is important for the government is to make a simple system, facilitate them to file their returns, provide them the ease to come forward and do it, reduce the compliance costs, and, and that should be the focus. And I think now that fact that you know 3B has become an integral part of the entire system, and, and gradually the 2B has also come to the surface. And the 2 and the 2B com combination, and then a lot of data, you know, from GSTR1 is going to be auto populated. Good number of taxpayers have a concern that whether it will be editable data. Certainly not. It will not be editable because the moment it has been picked up, you know, the data from different baskets and it is getting auto populated. And the moment you you give the, you get the facility of editing it, then this this will require a parallel editing of various other data from which that you know it is being you know auto populated and supply of input is coming from the auto population. So that will not be possible. I think uh, and ultimately uh, this is a huge step forward and it's a good thinking and we are moving in the right direction and a lot of ease is going to be finally recorded by the taxpayers in the coming months yes sir good good Thank but you, now sir. we have i think uh, slowly the problems are coming out of the pandora's box into another perfect otherwise perfect world mr kulraj what do you think of this two issues uh, this uh, quarterly sir. payment one, one second sir quarterly payment uh, quarterly returns and monthly payment. How is it going to affect the credit? And then Mr. Sridhar has raised a very important point, which I think Shailendra has given a solution, but does this require a change in the law? Does it require an amendment in the act? And if so, will the central government and the state governments be able to get the amendment before 31st of December? Certainly, sir. Uh, uh, so the point uh, Mr. Shridhar uh, raised is, is absolutely valid and is uh, valid in the current scheme as well. Uh, currently also the credit is available in form of GSTR 2 way because you have outer limit uh, of 110% of the invoices that a supplier uploads in Rule 36.4. A similar problem arises wherein a taxpayer which has a, a greater turnover and 
he purchases from a taxpayer which is under quarterly scheme who files the return on a quarterly basis and do not uploads it invoices on a on a real time basis on a monthly basis the invoices do not get a, a part of the gstr 2a and therefore it has a difficulty in in the recipient to avail credit because uh, 2a does not count for these invoices uh, in the quarterly scheme this this continues to be a, a a huge debate and government has to bring up some mechanism wherein the smaller taxpayer having a turnover of less than 5 crores are able to upload invoices in some shape or the other and if they do not then government has a robust mechanism then do away with the limit of having a veiling credit up to 110% of the invoices uploaded only so let's let's have some clear mechanism uh, that is something that is uh, very well uh, 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 pointed out mr shridhar and the problem more so is there because the turnover has increased from 1 and 1/2 crore to 5 crore so there will be a lot of tax payers now in the net who will be filing a quarterly return uh, the second uh, issue which uh, mr shridhar raised and has a larger repercussion is that the current enactment if you see gst law is largely based upon gstr 1 gstr 2 and gstr 3 the entire matching concepts there are several sections in the law which are uh, enforcing that concept only if you specifically see section 41 which talks about the provisional credit which gets confirmed only when uh, 42 and 43 which is gstr 2 and gstr 3 gets applicable uh, so government necessarily has to bring out all those enactment changes also now when they will do uh, Uh, because because everything if has to be applicable on first of january parliament has to sit down uh, these enactment has to go either these provisions have to get redundant a new provision has to be made effective uh, so all these changes are there which which uh, uh, has to happen in the uh, the gst law further to that uh, uh, if you see the entire scheme uh, today as well uh, the return filing system and stuff has no legal backing to it you only have specified that gstr 3b that shall be the return what happens to the matching concept where is that government has introduced a rule a law called 43a where uh, the government introduced provision for the new return filing system that has not been made effective yet whether the government can play around with that provision and create all these subordinate legislations government has to work upon that uh, so there are a lot of enactment changes that government should do to bring into force the new a uh, scheme of compliances it is not so simple because currently also the main struggle is that because enactment doesn't provide anything and everything comes to notification in some shape or the other and those are being challenged so i think uh, mr shridhar has pointed out the right thing uh, not only one specific scenario i think the entire matching concept that is inbuilt in the gst in act act only has to undergo a change and has to form a shape into this new compliance system which is 13b and 2b Uh, those are not really recognized by the gst law at present uh, i think sir you know here mr kurwaj is right but only point is that that for a lot of things we did not depend on the government you know to regulate us i mean i mean the industry and trade we uh, should not really expect the government to regulate for every small thing you know i mean so far as this uh, the invoice is uploading up invoice are concerned by ssc is less than 5 crore turnover as you rightly said there would be a good number of uh, you know the tax taxpayers now under this particular category but the fact that that a lot of uh, uh, large ssc ever fight pro they will have to take a call that you know if government gives this option you know maybe let's say voluntary option that you can always upload your uh, invoices even if you are you are not filing your or you have opted for quarterly return and you are paying you know this monthly uh, uh, you know the tax payment of 35% but if you go on uploading your invoices that that will help their their large large you know the, the you know the buyers in terms of you know looking at the okay the invoices that are uploaded they can always avail the credit so i mean i mean this gst law provides for the you know the blacklisting and rating and all that stuff is perhaps not required you know good number of you know the the, the large essences themselves they can decide whom whom exactly they should do business with and whom they should really strike it off or blacklist so i think you know small changes tinkering perhaps not i mean we should not expect too much of amendment in the law because that creates another mess we have seen in last three and a half years that you know a lot of amendments here and there and creating another set of issues and so far as this matching concept is concerned i mean so far as we are concerned so far i mean as a taxpayer matching is for the revenue you know they 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 are concerned about this misuse and abuse of the itc 
I mean, so far as we are concerned, we are we are availing uh, filing returns, we are taking the ITC, we are having all the all the benefits, etc. So, I mean, that's a concern which GST and perhaps is working on that quietly, and maybe they are looking for the system to stabilize, and then perhaps finally they will they will do this large scale amendment in the provisions and you know in the law, etc. And 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 I think a good number of uh, amendments, uh, not exactly hardcore in law, but procedural amendment. Most of the states have issued notification whereby they are ratifying. They have said that you know all such things approved by the GST Council. Once the CGST authority notify all the changes, automatically it gets ratified by all the states. So that's that is how most of the procedural changes come into effect immediately. Only the substantive part of the law, yes, that will require that it has to go through, you know, the individual assemblies in various states. You know, so far as SGST laws are concerned, so that is how I look at it. Yeah, you have simplified it very too too much, so that now delegated uh, legislation can take over. Even Kudraj was mentioning that things are done by notifications. Jay Kumar, the question is the the question is the education. The question is the education of those small taxpayers. I think we should, I would like to listen to, we should ask Mr. Anil Kumar Gupta how they plan to educate the people less than 5 crores. Because see, if you look at the three year history of what education has happened, when I'm talking about education, I mean GST education down to the classes that have been divided by way of their turnovers. See, much of the much of the trouble of the large industries, they themselves educated their distributor class, their supplier class, etc. Now, the people who are caught in between is I'm I'm the real people who are caught in between is people who are about three, four crores, but less than 50 crores. They 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 are got that turnover, which is of a good turnover as per the GST law, but in terms of the commercial proposition, their education, how to handle the change acceptance of the change and change over and you're talking about see there was there was a stream of changes announced up to up to september of 2020 now suddenly this we have now we have, we have not suddenly we have done everything for the good but the question is getting the people less than five between five to 20 crores or 25 crores or 50 crores to understand this whole thing in this time is more something Something wrong with your voice, uh, Mr. Sridhar. We'll come back to you. Uh, anyway, Mr. Mr. Anil Gupta. To forward and uh, I ask Mr. Yeah. Gupta. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Anil Kumar Gupta's main concern is educating the tax pay tax administrators. He is not going to educate the taxpayers much. He'll start with the tax administrators. Anyway, sir, maybe you have something to add uh, to this. How can how we can go about it? Uh, let's not get too complicated into too complicated affairs of notification or law or whatever. How this can be? Do you think that we can implement this by the first of January? And before that, I have a very I don't know how to describe it. Comments from one of your uh, former colleagues, a distinguished IRS officer, Mr. Rastogi says he says this to all panelists. What has GST administration? learned from the excise and service tax administration if procedural changes are announced too frequently what has gst administration learned from the failures of excise and service tax administration if procedural change or something anyway i don't expect you to answer that sir uh, we'll go ahead with our discussion on mr sridhar wants you to educate the taxpayers, especially at the lower level, who are going to be caught in this quarterly return and monthly payment. But uh, what we were discussing was the legality of it. How do we go about it? And can we do it by notifications? Can all the states and the center put this into practice by the 1st of January? Vipasa. Yes, uh, two issues. Uh, one, uh, before we come to the education part of the taxpayers as well as the tax administrators about the, this new scheme of quarterly return and monthly payments. Uh, one issue, another which was being debated and uh, Shalender, in fact, uh, gave the answer in itself that uh, people can upload their invoices the issue was of how the credit, if the quarterly return is there, how the credit will flow. So I think that facility of invoice filing facility is already 
being inbuilt in the queue quarterly return and monthly payment system uh, maybe uh, perhaps uh, it is at initial stages of drafting so it may not be uh, known in public but this facility is already there uh, being built into that uh, even if you are filing your returns quarterly you would have the facility of uploading invoices there so that problem of credit flow will not emerge i think that is being taken care of in this new scheme which is coming up now second issue is of training or education of small tax payers now if you see uh, the entire history of gst i would say ke four years one year before gst launch the government has been very very proactive in terms of uh, educating both tax payers as well as tax consultants administrators everyone besides training uh, organizing various training programs for our officers and staff both by nasan national academy of customs and direct taxes and its journal campuses besides that even field formations have been organizing various kinds of updates programs the fresher courses and all for the officer and staff but lot of our uh, training of tax payers or education is not directly the mandate of nasan but we provide uh, the support in terms of building the content sharing the ppts or course contents but actually that Uh, education of taxpayer is basically with the field formation and they are conducting lot of if you see in the pre gst era or immediately post gst uh, era lot of uh, education programs for tax stakeholders various stakeholders in which taxpayers were there and in that process lot of uh, this organized phd chambers commerce fiki other ashu gap other trade bodies whether it's institute of cost accountant institute of chartered accountant company secretary all lot of organization they have been uh, organizing various programs for education of taxpayers and uh, in fact i see even during this covid time fiki and uh, phd chambers of commerce both they have been doing and conducting a lot of and because they keep on asking for faculty from us on various issues so we uh, know that they have been conducting a lot of tax uh, education program for stakeholder as you know all these uh, schemes uh, uh they have nitigrities and it takes time and sometime another question which was fundamental question which was in which with due regard to our steam claim city arustogi which is mentioned whether we are learning from the central excise and service tax experience no it's a double as weapon now if you don't reform yourself you don't make changes then you are designated that government is not listening people are dying and if you make changes and uh, do it frequently then uh, you are blamed that perhaps what we brought earlier was not planned well so it is going to uh, that kind of criticism is welcome and in fact <laughs> it's always good uh, be, uh, becoming so we have to strike uh, you have to but uh, the approach which government is taking okay whatever criticism whatever feedback whatever is coming and whatever is actually the need of the people tax payer small big small medium uh, you should keep on reforming the law because it's a um as you know uh, bringing gst itself was a tough challenge and all of you are know it, it took more than decade to settle down and bring consensus uh, every state had its own vat laws state tax laws then you had center still it's not a complete gst we all know a lot of commodities are still missing from the gst petroleum is out then alcohol for human consumption is out electricity is exempted so many things uh, are there so uh, a lot of gdp is out of the gst what i will say but still uh, bringing all that consensus is big challenge Uh, in a federal structure and we are seeing what is happening on compensation cess also in that way so uh, i 
would uh, uh, conclude by saying that it's always good that okay, whatever reforms we can do to ease out uh, the pains of the taxpayers, it's always welcome. Though every reform itself sometimes causes some pain, but we have to see whether that little pain can give big relief. Then we should welcome. It. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Oh, that's good, yes, sir. sir. I yes, would like to yes, add sir. something, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Yeah, sir please. has raised the point of education. In fact, sir, you know, you know, as per my experience, you know, looking at all the changes being done in direct and indirect tax side in the last at least three decades, you know, GST stands out. Uh, where I see the huge amount of organized efforts being undertaken by government of India and the states together, like Mr. Uh, Anil Kumar Gupta suggested, the pre-GST and post-GST, lots of FAQs, and and I believe uh, Dr. Adhya was the only Revenue Secretary I remember who came out for all those DD-driven, you know, the broadcast, uh, you know, GST classes. In fact, I mean that yes. was targeted at you know the taxpayers only, the GST assessors. Nasan, of course, did a lot of work, you know, to, to for state governments and consultants, etc., for training and master trainers, etc. So, of course, I mean, it's it's an ongoing process. It, it's a process, so it cannot be stopped. And education takes its own time, so naturally, and it, it becomes tougher for the taxpayer because you know the tax laws are also changing. So by the time you learn a few things, you find that you know the new provisions, the new amendments, etc., have been infused into it. So then, then you have to relearn the whole thing. So I think you know, you know this process is ongoing. It will take some time, depending on the size of the taxpayer and the requirement, because huge number of traders even today they are they are paying GST. But if you ask them, the only thing they know is that yeah yeah on my product I am paying eighteen percent, nothing beyond that. They don't know much about GST except the tax rate, and they talk about only the tax rate. You know, so good number of people in fact they are still depending too much on the consultants and all those uh, compliance agents. And the facilitators, they have absolutely no idea. They have not heard of ITC at all. So, I mean, this education will, will filter down, will reach that level. And it's permeating gradually, trickling down to that level. But it will take a few, 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 few more years, I guess. Yes. Yes, sir. Please, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, fine. I think uh, we are almost uh, reached the end of our time allotted to us. And... Uh, from compliance to education, well, it seems to be that good things are happening. And uh, maybe as far as Mr. Gupta is concerned, once he educates his administrators well, I'm sure they can go to the field and educate the trade. And maybe Sridhar and uh, Tax India Online, we can also pitch in and help them in organizing some classes or advising people without uh, anyway as uh, shailendra has simplified the whole process i am paying 18% to help with what are all your procedures and uh, all your uh, legal, legal linguistics but simplification sir as uh, mr kutas have said is is not really simple in fact the central excise act in 1944 was made to simplify the complicated excise laws prevailing at that time since 1944, we are simplifying matters, and I hope uh, one day things would be much simpler. And uh, Mr. Kulraj, do you have anything to add before we conclude? Uh, nothing specific. I, I just hope that uh, uh, as good as the taxation laws are evolving, I think uh, the tax administration happens in the similar good manner. Uh, we are expecting a lot of uh, audits to come in in the recent time. I think the point highlighted by Mr. Sridhar will play a lot of importance now. If taxpayer tax administration is educated, they are known about the fact. I think the taxpayers rather the compliance is burden, the taxpayers the taxpayer overall thought process about uh, the overall GST administration will not be improved, will not be positive. So I think I think uh, it, it, uh, the next year is going to be uh, is going to be a lot more important. We will see a, uh, uh, the next phase of GST audit into place where the department will come into picture. Uh, we will see the next compliance system being introduced. So I think the uh, if the government administration is, is as good as the, the thought process of uh, the simplifying compliances, I think the taxpayers would be more than happy about it. Yeah, that's good. 
sir uh, i would like to have one observation you know for rustaki sahab's uh, observation here so that what exactly the the excise and service tax administration they have learned you know uh, if if the procedural changes are announced so frequently sir actually if if this is left only to cgst authorities perhaps they could have implemented you know some of the pearls of wisdom which they would they would have gathered you know during the central excise and service tax period and they know the pitfalls of that phase and they could have perhaps bypassed and avoided those pitfalls but the so equal stakeholder here are the sgst authorities and they have got a say in everything and i have seen that in most of the time the law committee uh, uh, you know the members they they are basically agreeing to the lowest denominator coming from the sgst side you know the state vat where they say that you know for our ssc we have very small ssc if you remove this procedure if you don't have this kind of compliance they will they will get out of this entire tax based network etc so a lot of things which today we find is largely also because because a lot of vat related things are there in the you know particularly the compliance side and that makes the system little more complicated and and a lot of uh, enlightenment which uh, perhaps cgst authorities may have gone through in in you know from the central excise act 1944 days perhaps they are not able to really pass on the benefit to the tax base that is how sir i look at it yes sir. i think i think they are speaking two different languages the central officers and the state officers and in fact one sentence on what mr ranganathan suggested the easiest way he said why why return at all the system can generate the return can we have a day when all that a tax payer has to do is upload his invoice what do you think kulraj that's the end of it i don't do anything else i think it, it's it's uh, it's the ultimate goal that government should have i think the government is working towards that uh, but yes certainly it will take some time eventually gst has to have a system wherein minimal effort has to happen to on compliance everything should flow online only Uh, so hopefully when e invoicing gets applicable to the entire public at entire industry at large uh, e waiver system is already good in place so i think this day should be very near wherein the compliance will require the minimal effort and everything will be governed to an automated it system oh great wonderful gupta sir you have anything to say on that uh i have the day when i i <laughs> sir I have nothing more to add. I have already st- uh, told that uh, uh, Shailendra, in fact, added to that that uh, if we uh, do a comparative study, whenever it is done, of all the education drives taken by all the taxations in India, uh, whether it's income tax or uh, earlier central excise or service tax or state weight laws. perhaps gst would outnumber by many many miles in terms of the efforts made to educate both taxpayers as well as tax administrators so but it's a continuous effort and still will carry on thank you thank you sir that's great mr vanganathan would you like to conclude just an observation on the much discussed topic of how to educate the taxpayers and the tax administrators i think lot was said Uh, my my goes back to 1986 when modvet was introduced which was a very revolutionary change at that point in time when there was hardly any communication channel like an internet or whatsapp available to make communication the government at that point in time instituted a system called the rac regional advisory committee uh, which comprised of the various tax administrators the chambers of commerce large industries small industries i used to be part of the rac in chennai which used to have about to close to 60 70 people and in the initial days we had monthly meetings uh, when mr ramanand was the chief commissioner at that point in time in fact he was the author of modvat in the board and he came down to chennai and became the commissioner so he took a lot of interest and i know in other big cities also this rac was in vogue so that really provided a great channel for communication between the Uh, users of the tax system and the tax administrator i don't know if this concept is still relevant in the modern age but this is something that the government can look at as a forum to resolve issues on an ongoing basis uh, thank you sir i think on that positive note but actually i don't know whether uh, what happened in the rcs was earlier you were talking about mr ramanan and all they used to give real clarifications during the rc meetings Commissioners used to take decisions and allow those decisions. 
over a period of time say you must have seen in the earlier days the managing directors of the companies used to attend the rac meetings after a few years the clerk dealing with xi started attending because they knew nothing is going to happen there so i hope that something real uh power is exercised properly anyway we are talking about education let's hope that yes mr sridhar you wanted to say something you can conclude mr sridhar your voice is not coming voice yes to unmute sridhar you have unmute yeah, yeah. yeah. the yeah. one point is kulraj just start, start from the beginning on that you know I, i one point that kulraj touched upon was on that concept of 110% credit since mr right. gupta is there this is very relevant with the new system in force with the new system in force with the 2b what is the relevance of 110% is itself a question right now and 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 the larger aspect of 89a the uh, the other issues concerning the other issues concerning uh, the the 36 itself needs to be really looked at 364 so unless a total approach is looked at whether this concept of con uh, constraining credits with this level level of 110% is taken so seriously nothing is going to come out see you cannot expect you such a such a vociferous system with so much of simplicity and with the concept of controlling credit at 110% because people are not uploading because you are preventing that people not being uploading only under under this new system so i think they don't go hand in hand so i think this needs to be looked at kulraj touched upon it and it was just left at that yes kulraj ji maybe you can uh, add two more sentences to that Maybe, uh, sir, if, sir, if, if, before that, if Gupta sir wants to say something on this, <laughs> no. Okay. I, I, I totally, I totally agree with Mr. Shree. There, with to be coming into picture, I think this entire requirement of thirty six four should not uh, be there at all, because everything is available to a taxpayer. Uh, so I think government has to do away with these nitty gritties and make law complicated by having limits to things. Sir. So uh, those should uh, idly be, uh, idly be removed, sir. Yeah, I think Sridhar. I the think the government I, also needs education badly, more than the taxpayer. I think I need to add only one line here. Yes, sir. Uh, which uh, uh, both uh, Sridhar and Kulraj have touched on this uh, very sensitive issue, and uh, uh, indirectly, Sridhar has already answered that uh, because of our peculiar nature of our. Uh, structure in india federal sector where gst is a collaborative effort of the states at center many things which you uh, see on the plate uh, may appear to be that as if uh, uh, it has come from the center or but actually uh, it is a uh, compromise where you do a lot of uh, stakeholders are there and certain times similarly i know because i was member at that time of gst law committee how this provision came and if there is any recording of those proceedings and later on down the line 10 years after that you can listen mm -hmm. to that what was being said about this provision by various members and finally how it came so i will not add anything more to that uh, history will tell how this 10% clause came and uh, who were for it who were against it and uh, how it is still standing in the law thank you sir i hope 20 years later when we have a webinar of this kind <laughs> webinars will still continue mr anil gupta will not be asking the panelists what have you learned from your gst experiences <laughs> on that note i hope we can close today thank you gupta sir thank you kulraj ji thank you ranganathan sir and thank, thank you. i thank my thank colleague sridhar and shalendra it was very nice to have you all and uh, it was wonderful it was so exhilarating after all when we have the guru ji with us things are more on the education lines than confrontation lines thank you all very much thank you Thank you. Thank you.